Well, the Alga Concerto is, of course, a very important piece uh, for us. I think it's dear to, to any cellist, really, that, that has the fortune to, to play it. But especially the coupling with bridge, which really is something very rarely played. Um, and really a piece, I believe, worth discovering, because there is so much drama in it that, uh, yeah, I really look forward to that. Both these pieces, both are reactions to the First World War in very different ways. If I'm very honest, Bridge is more known to me to being the teacher of Benjamin Britten than actually is a composer in his own right. And I have to say, I'm really taken by it. I think it's a very, very serious, very important statement. Well, it is, it is a very reduced Elgar uh, in many senses, of course, uh, in how he develops the, the motives, first of all, but then also the orchestration, which has practical uh, reasons, uh, making sure that the cello comes through. But then I think it's also due to yeah, a certain wisdom, maybe a certain age also that he had when he composed this. It has, of course, a very special place in its work, being the last main work that he wrote. Whereas I think here, the Elgar Concerto, written a year after the end of the First World War, I mean, it would have been impossible then not to be affected by what's happened. And there's a lot of darkness in the piece, and there are moments of light and lightness, but then it often comes back. And that is really a sign for me that Elgar was slipping out of his, his role and trying to deal with his own new reality. For sure, there is an influence of the recording, of course, uh, by Jacqueline Dupré. But I think any attempt to imitate that or, or to try to go down the same lane would be foolish. Of course, you have to find uh, your, own, your own path through this music. And to me, I think lots of things that, uh, that I look for in this music have to do with this inner pain that, that the music has, but which is never transported outwards uh, in an open fashion. It is always hidden, there's always the sense of, of noblesse to it. When you look at these two pieces side by side, the Elgar and the Bridge, is that they were both kind of influenced by the same traumatic event. We're always, of course, coming back to, to World War I. And to see how these two composers dealt with this trauma in their life in very different ways. Uh, where Elgar, um, I think, deals with, with the sense of loss, of, of something that, that was beautiful and now is gone. Bridge deals much more directly with the horrors of the world. It's 
Bridge was a pacifist, didn't belong to the establishment, he was rejected. To be a pacifist back then was, was a terrible thing. This is a reaction, he said, is a reaction to the First World War that, that took 10 years to rise. What I find very interesting is the idea of the cellist, the individual who is asking the questions and often the mass, the orchestra, the establishment, almost going against that with a, with a brutality that of course we all know from footage of the first one. Recording is a snapshot of where we are at that moment. I think there is a place for, for to be young as a musician, so that brings a certain quality, and then with age come other things, experience, wisdom, and so on. But I think that's, that's the beauty of, of making that recording, that you then, maybe in 20 years, you can say, ah, this is, this is how I play, this is what I was thinking at the time, this is how I did certain things.